Hello, integrated math one. Welcome to lesson 2.3.3b. We're on page M2-187 in your Carnegie volume one workbook. So yeah, we're gonna continue with graphing inequalities in two variables <clears throat> on a coordinate plane. But before we do, we do have just a couple of warm-up problems. You did warm-ups one, two, and three last time. Today, you're gonna do warm-ups four, five, and six. Again, the idea is, is your y coordinate greater than x? Is your y coordinate less than x? Or is your y coordinate equal to x? That's all you're doing. So go ahead, hit pause, work it out, hit play when you're ready to check your work. So here I can see, I need my pen. That's what I can see, I need my pen. So I have, that's my x coordinate and that's my y coordinate. So my y coordinate, negative three, is actually greater than my x coordinate of negative four. Oh, did you catch that? Remember that on a number line, negative three is to the right of negative four, so negative three is actually greater than negative four. So in this case then, y is greater than x. For number five, um, both my x coordinate and my y coordinate are nine, and so they are equal to each other. So my y coordinate is equal to my x coordinate. And last but not least, number six, my x coordinate is negative three. My y coordinate is negative 10. So negative 10 is less than negative three. I hope you caught that. More negatives is less, right? So negative 10 is to the left of negative three on a number line. It means negative 10 is less than negative three. So y is less than x, awesome. Um, good job, yay. So today, again, we're continuing to graph uh, inequalities in two variables. We're just taking it a little further. We played with this a little bit last time. So we discovered, just like um, we had open circle, closed circle, depending on whether or not our inequality was equal to. Now we have dashed line or solid line, right? If it's a uh, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, it's a solid line. If it's just less than or just greater than, it's going to be a dashed line. And we also realized that was our boundary line, right? And then we had to decide which side to shade on, if you recall. So do we shade above or do we shade below? And that kind of depended on if our y was greater than or if our y was less than. That would tell us if we had to shade above our boundary line or the half plane below our boundary line. So we're still focusing on our learning goals, writing an inequality in two variables. We did that a little bit last time. We were graphing our inequality in two variables on a coordinate plane. We're gonna do more of that today. Determine whether a solid or dashed boundary line is used to graph an inequality in a coordinate plane. We were just talking about that and figuring that out from last time. And we're gonna take it a little further and interpret the solutions of inequalities mathematically and in the context of real world problems. So just to get us back on track, just to get us back on track, I would like you to graph some inequalities. So on page M2-194, there's actually several of these. And of course, I can only fit one at a time on my page <coughs> because I only have so much space on these slides. So go ahead and graph each linear inequality. I believe there's three of them. Again, I can look at one per, per slide. So go ahead and do numbers five, A, B, and C on page 194 there. Hit pause to work those out. Hit play when you're ready to check your work. So the first thing I notice is that is greater than. There's no squashed equal sign. So I know it's going to be a dashed boundary line at y equals x plus three. So let's graph this, right? Um, three is my y-intercept, so I'm gonna put a little dot like, boo, right there. Uh, my slope, ooh, is one over one. Ah, I hope you caught that. So from here, we'll go up one over one and we'll make another lovely dot. And we said it should be a dashed boundary line, so when I use my straight edge to make my line, I'm gonna make sure it's a dashed line, yay. Last but not least, which side, uh, which half plane do we need to color or to shade in above or below? Well, this is that y is greater than x plus three. So here's my boundary line and y should be everything greater than that. So I'm gonna shade in everything up above my boundary line. Yay. Next. Oh, sorry about that. There's a little dot there I didn't mean to have. I'll fix that in a little bit. 
Um, first things first, let's go ahead and graph this any linear inequality. I see a little half equal sign. So that tells me it's going to be a solid boundary line, right? So a solid boundary line at y equals negative one-third x plus four. <clears throat> so let's graph this. My y-intercept is four, so one, two, three, four. There it is, and we'll make our little dot. My slope is negative one-third, so I need to go down one over three to make my next little dot. And we said it should be a solid boundary line, so when I use my straight edge to make my line, I'm going to make sure it's solid. Last but not least, I do have to figure out which side to color. Um, it says y is less than or equal to negative one-third x plus four. Well, if y is less than, that means it's going to be below my boundary line. So shade away. Shade away, shade away, shade away. Sure, there you go. Beautiful. Now I'm going to mess with you. Are you ready? I'm going to mess with you. Are you ready? Percy. I have 2x minus y is less than 4. I want you to graph it. You may want to get your y alone first. So I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and pause again. If you didn't already, if you haven't already tried this, this is a good chance to pause, get the Y alone, and then see what you can do with it. So hit pause and hit play to keep going. So as I was saying, I would recommend getting the Y alone first. So I'm going to subtract 2X, subtract 2X, that cancels out, yeah. So I have negative y is less than, oh wow, sorry, my pen went weird. I will fix that. Um, less than negative 2x, and that's a plus 4. Now, y still isn't quite alone. I have a negative sign on it. There's a few ways you could manage this. You could multiply both sides by a negative 1. You could divide both sides by a negative 1. Because if you recall, you can always put a 1 in front of your naked variable. I'm going to go ahead and divide everybody by a negative one. I think that'll make it better. So now I have a uh, y. Oh, since I divided everybody by a negative, instead of less than, it becomes oh, greater than. Oh, did you remember to flip the inequality? Did you remember that? I told you this was a tricky one. There were all kinds of little tricks in there. Negative 2x divided by negative 1 is a positive 2x, and 4 divided by negative 1 is a negative 4. So, oh my gosh, so much happened. Not only did we get the y alone, we ended up having to actually flip our inequality. Watch out for that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. But we've done it. We've done this. I do not see a little half equal sign. So that means it's going to be a dashed boundary line at y equals 2x minus 4. So my, let's graph it. My y-intercept is a negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Boop, put my dot right there. Uh, my slope is 2, don't forget 2 over 1. So from my y-intercept, I'm going to go up 2 and over 1, make another dot. And when I use my straight edge, we're going to make sure it's a nice dashed boundary line. Lovely, wonderful, beautiful. And, of course, I need to know if I should shade, which half plane I should shade, the upper half or the lower half. This says y is greater than 2x minus 4. So I need to shave everything that's greater than my boundary line. Woo. So this means my solutions are all up here. All this shady half plane stuff. It's shady. Um, but that's where my solution is. Yay. So let's just, uh, let's just talk for a second here. Previously, you have written linear, uh, a linear equation given various representations, like if you have two points or a point in a slope or a table of values or a graph, can you write the linear equation, right? We've done that before. If I have the slope, if I have the y-intercept, I can write y equals mx plus b, right? I can write the equation. We can use a similar approach when writing a linear inequality, right? If you got your slope, you got your y-intercept. If you know if the line is dashed or solid, if you know it's shaded above or below, you can actually use the graph to write the inequality. Right? Right? So here's the deal. I have this. This is lovely, isn't it? So here I have a linear inequality that's been graphed. Yay! And we want to write the inequality for this. 
So this is in your book on page M2-195. Sorry that the writing is so tiny up here, but it had to fit on the screen. So this is what we've got. Um, so let's talk about this for a moment. First of all, let's treat it like an inequality, right? What are things we know? Let's talk about the boundary line here. Well, I can see I have a y-intercept at negative 5, right? I have a y-intercept at negative 5. Hooray! Um, we do need to find a slope. So I'm going to find another point. Doo -doo -doo, that looks like a good point. I'm going to find another point on the line, and then we'll do our rise over run. So it looks like I had to go down 3, and then I ran 2. So that means my slope will be negative 3 over 2. So I had to go down 3 over 2, so my slope is negative 3 over 2, rise over run. And that means if I were to write this as an equation, I would write it as y equals negative 3 halves x minus 5. But the thing is, it's not an equation. It's an inequality. This thing is shaded. Well, let's talk then. I see a solid line, so that tells me it's going to have a little half equal sign up uh, under there. I also see it shaded above my line, so this means that y has to be greater than or equal to because it's shaded up above the boundary line and it's solid. So that means y is greater than or equal to negative 3 halves x minus 5. Yay! Well, that's not so bad. It got a little messy there. But we have our y-intercept, we have our slope, and I can totally write the inequality now. We know it's a solid line. We saw it was shaded above, and there we go. Huzzah, and happy day. So I have a few more of these on the next couple pages here. So um, starting at page M2-196, we got a couple of these here. I would like you to write a linear equality for each one of these graphs. There's several of them here. Again, I can only fit one at a time on my page, on my slide, but there's several of them here. So go ahead, write a linear equality for each graph, hit pause, work these out, and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so we're gonna write a linear inequality for each graph. Well, first of all, I can see that my y-intercept is 2. So, oh, go back. What are you doing? I can see that my y-intercept is 2. So, uh, oh my gosh, what is happening? I want my pen. Things are happening. My y-intercept is at 2, so that's something. Y-intercept is at positive 2. Um, let's figure out the slope. If I follow this line, it looks like the next nice little point I get is up here. So it looks like I had to rise 4 and run one, so I'm gonna say my slope is four over one, or you could just say your slope is four if you didn't wanna put the one under it. I notice it has a dashed boundary line. I notice that it's shaded below. I think we have everything we need, yeah. So since it's shaded below and dashed, I know it's y is less than whatever else I have going on over there. For my mx plus b, we know the slope is 4. We know the y-intercept is 2. Hooray! Yay! How'd you do on the next one? Let's check. All right. Y-intercept is here at negative 3. Okay, so I wrote that down. I'm going to follow the line, and I can see my next point is right here. So it looks like I went up 1 over 2. So it looks like my slope is 1 over 2, or 1 half. I see a solid boundary line. I see I'm shaded above my boundary line, the half plane up above. So this tells me a few things. So first of all, y, if it's above, is greater than if it's solid or equal to. Um, of course, my slope is 1 half, so it's 1 half x. And my y-intercept is negative 3, so minus 3. Hooray! More, 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 more. More. Last one. Uh, let's write our linear inequality. Well, I can see my y-intercept is at negative 2, so I wrote that down. Um, if I follow the line, does it hit there? 
Oh, that looks like a better spot. It hits up there. That's better. So it looks like I went up three and over four. So that means my slope is three fourths, right? Rise over run. I rose three. I ran four. Dash line. That tells me something. Dash boundary line. And I'm shaded below. Okay. Okay. So it's Y. If it's dashed and shaded below, it's going to be less than, and since it's dashed, no squashed equal sign. My slope is 3 fourths, so 3 fourths x. My y-intercept is minus 2. Hooray. Look how nice that is. That's a good trick. Fabulous. As always, guys, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this useful. If you got questions, concerns, need a little extra, come talk to me. Let me know. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.